The perfect display of Game Boy games requires precision. It's a good thing these Game Boy games are the exact same size and shape, because anything else would just ruin my- Damn it! We've all seen these. Game Boy games that have an extra feature. Some cartridges have rumble, others have tilt or a gyroscope. I have a few of these cartridges, and in fact, there's more than you think. There's actually a community that collects these different types of cartridges, and some have even organized and made a complete list of them, usually organized by the actual chip number that the cartridge uses, probably named in the development cycle. Now, I'm not gonna get that detailed, so I put them into categories of what they actually do, and I kind of simplified them. But if you want to learn more information about the specific chips and different cartridges and which ones are unique, I'll have some links in the description below. Now I categorized them into different categories here. I have RTC, real-time clock cartridges, and Pokemon can be an example of here. Basically cartridges that have an extra feature that has a clock in the system to keep track of time. There's also cartridges that have rumble support, usually in the form of adding a AA battery on Game Boy Color cartridges. Or for example on the GBA, the battery is built into the cartridge itself. The next category would be some cartridges have IR sensors or some other type of physical feature like a speaker. For example, I believe the trading Pokemon game 2 in Japan also used an IR sensor to trade Pokemon within the cartridges, kind of like the Game Boy Color did with its infrared sensor. The next category I would say would be tilt or accelerometer and it's basically games that you tilt or or even have a gyroscope. Probably the most notable would be like WarioWare Twisted or other games like that. I tried to get a game from each different category but they are more expensive because of that extra feature. I'm gonna go ahead and show a little bit of gameplay from each different game and show you what the differences are between these and regular cartridges. And if you want to add these games to your collection, well you're gonna need some cash. Which reminds me, I gotta call Chase and, and ask them for an increase on my credit limit. Hello Chase? Yeah, I wanna increase on my credit limit. For what? Oh, uh, yeah, I wanna buy Game Boy Advance games that have extra features. Hello? First on the list is Yoshi's Topsy Turvy, otherwise known as Yoshi's Universal Gravitation in other regions that are not North America. Now I have the Japanese version here, which you can find usually around 15 to 20 bucks depending on where you look. The English version is usually a little bit more, maybe the cheapest 25, usually going up to 40. And this game has a built-in tilt sensor to tilt left and right in the game. Let's take a look. This is Yoshi's Topsy Turvy. Although I do prefer that universal gravitation name because like the game suggests, you kind of control gravity. So this game, you can have like three save files and after you beat the whole game, you do unlock like a challenge mode. Um, let me go into the first level to show you what I, uh, what the mechanics of the game are. The game's fairly short. Um, it's got about six worlds. The last one's a boss, so it's got about five. But every world has these different missions and every level has certain objectives you have to do. You have to collect coins or defeat enemies or in some cases not defeat enemies and they give you a time limit on some of them. And you can either get a passing grade, a silver or a gold medal, and you need a silver and gold medal to advance to the next world. So here in this first level, pretty simple. It basically plays like a Yoshi's Island type of game, but this carpet here, if you tilt to the right like this, it moves. You can climb up walls by tilting the device left or right. You can control different objects and levels like this ball right here. You can control which way things move. Every level has something that you control and the whole mechanic is based around that tilting mechanic. There's even some levels where Yoshi transforms into things like a ball here and you control gravity by tilting left and right. If you're a fan of Yoshi's Island and you don't mind tilt controls, you should give this game a try. But fair warning, it's not that great. But it is pretty short, so it has that going for it, I guess. Next up are the Rumble Packs. Ready to Rumble here, it's probably the cheapest game on this list. You can find it around 10 bucks, even 20 bucks for a complete set. And Pokemon Pinball here goes for about 20 bucks. Now with the Rumble games, sometimes you can find it even cheaper if the game is missing that battery cover, like the ones I have, for example. But you don't need the cover to uh, actually play the game or feel the Rumble. These games require a AAA battery. And let me just show you with a ready to rumble, just how strong that rumble is.
And the cool thing about this cartridge, since it's see-through, you can actually see the rumble motor spin around. And in terms of the actual feel, it kind of just feels like the old school kind of rumble, you know, the Xbox 360, PlayStation controller kind of rumble. Now this being a boxing game, I think it actually goes well with it because it rumbles whenever you connect a punch or get hit. And I'm not saying this game is, uh, you know, button masher, but kind of just bash buttons to pass the game. Although you can see that it does have some sort of strategy. You can dodge moves and make little combos and stuff, but I mainly went with this little uppercut and shimmied up and down and waited until I hit the other character. And once you build up your rumble meter, you can then hit them with this rumble special and your character just goes turbo mode. It's funny because they can still knock you out if you're doing your special. Stay down. Final warning. And then Pokemon Pinball, it's the same basic concept. Anytime I hit these bumpers or something happens, the cartridge rumbles a bit. The difference being, I mean no offense to Ready to Rumble fans, but Pokemon Pinball I think is a better game. It's actually a pretty decent game, and they did make a sequel on the Game Boy Advance. Although Ready to Rumble did come out in other consoles, including home consoles. So those versions might actually be better than this Game Boy Color version. This is one feature that was lost in the following generations of the handheld console of Nintendo. The DS and 3DS didn't have any rumble support built in, but the DS did have an accessory for the Game Boy Advance slot that allowed rumble in certain games. The next game up is Kirby's Tilt and Tumble. I have the Japanese version again, just like the Yoshi game, but this one's an even bigger price difference. The North American or English version runs about $70 at the lowest, and the Japanese version was about 12 bucks. And this game actually came up pretty recently in the last Nintendo Direct. They showed that this game's gonna come to the service later on. So the way this game works, unlike the Yoshi cartridge, it's not just a tilt sensor, it's a gyroscope. So you can go in any direction, basically. But the game does warn you that you should hold your Game Boy flat. So sometimes it could be a little awkward to play, especially if you're laying down somewhere. This game does allow you to calibrate the gyroscope, which I ended up doing it and it actually made the game a lot easier. But even so, this game is actually pretty difficult. And unlike the Yoshi game comparing them again, this game is actually fun. Sorry Yoshi Topsy Turvy fans. This game basically plays out as a puzzle slash platformer kind of game, but from a bird's eye view angle. And you tilt to control Kirby and he's rolled up into like a ball form and he moves into the direction that you tilt the game. And not only do you control Kirby, but you control the environment. So I guess technically you don't control Kirby, you control the entire level or, or platforms that Kirby is on, kind of like Super Monkey Ball, I guess. You can also do different like motions to do different things in a game. So like if you kind of tilt your Game Boy back and kind of like snap it forward like this, Kirby jumps so you can actually jump onto a cloud or attack enemies because that's also Kirby's attack is basically he jumps up and then stomps down. And throughout the game there's also different bosses and, and new mechanics are added throughout the game. Like I said the game is difficult and it is due to those motion controls. It's a bit sensitive but it's pretty accurate. It'll be interesting to see how they implement it on the Nintendo Switch. Maybe they'll add analog controls for the Switch, which I think would make the game even funner for me. But those who like gyroscope controls, I'm sure they'll still have it on there since the Joy-Cons have that technology. And on to the last game, Tamagotchi 3. Or its full name, Game the Hakken Tamagotchi Osuchi to Misuchi. Or something like that, I don't know, I probably butchered the name. But this is the only game that didn't get an English release on my list, and was actually only released in Japanese as well as the second one of this game. The first Tamagotchi for Game Boy was released in English, but only this third one has this extra feature of a built-in speaker. And you can remove the battery with this little screw here instead of opening the entire cartridge. It also has a switch to turn the speaker on and off on the side. And you can usually find this game anywhere from 10 to 15 to 20 dollars, depending on where you find it. If you import it from other the country, obviously you're gonna pay import fees. But this game's not that expensive. Now like I mentioned earlier, it has a built-in speaker and it has a button to turn it off and on. And that speaker is used as an alarm for when your Tamagotchi needs something in the game. And since this game didn't come out in English, I had to look online to find more info on it. But unfortunately, there's not a lot of info online. Even when I searched in Japanese, I did find articles and some reviews and a wiki page on some information. But other than that, there wasn't much, but I think that's mainly due to a language barrier. Now the actual game, it's it's literally a Tamagotchi. The difference between this and the first two versions is that now they implemented the real-time clock or the RTC that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. This lets you play like a regular Tamagotchi and use the real-time instead of like a sort of an in-game time. 
and when you first boot the game up, it has an option to choose if you want real time or traditional Tamagotchi Game Boy time. Now I believe the second option here is the real time from what I've been able to translate online. Now the big problem I did encounter with this game is that I never got the alarm to work. I never heard the speaker go off. It's supposed to notify you even when the Game Boy's off. Maybe I just have a defective cartridge. So I did what any sane person would do. I bought a second copy of Tamagotchi 3 for the Game Boy. Unfortunately, this one also never worked. And I think it's not because they're defective. I think they actually do work. It's just because of that language barrier I mentioned earlier that I'm just not able to get to that part of the game. I tried both the traditional and the real time, but online I did see something where the alarm and speaker only works when you're doing real time training. I don't know what they meant by that, but maybe it doesn't help that I don't really know anything about Tamagotchi either. I tried raising it just like a regular Tamagotchi. I played mini games, I fed them, I cleaned up after they went to the restroom, I gave them medicine when they were sick. This game even has a feature to interact with another Tamagotchi on another Game Boy. And I think it uses an infrared sensor at the top. Could be wrong about that though, I don't know what it says in these settings. So even after I played like a regular Tamagotchi, I never heard that sound from it. I thought, okay, maybe I'll do the opposite and I'll hear that speaker because maybe it never needed anything. Oh, hey, uh, what do, you, what do you want? Can't you see I'm trying to take care of my virtual pet here? The different approach I took was, I didn't feed my Tamagotchi, I didn't clean up after its restroom, I didn't do anything, I just left it alone. And when I came back to the game, this happened. My Tamagotchi just started glitching and then... This is by far the darkest game over screen I've ever seen in a Game Boy game. Look at that poor Tamagotchi, there's a cross. The little ghost. Imagine some kid got this for like their 8th birthday and now they're scarred for the rest of their life with this death screen. And I know you're probably thinking like of course it died, you didn't take care of it, you didn't do anything. But I wanted to see if I could hear that speaker, you know, maybe it was going to cry out for some food or something. But I never got to hear it. Playing all these games makes me want to buy all the different games with extra features. Where's my wallet? Ah, here it is. Okay, you know what? Okay, let's let's see how much it's gonna be. Let's see, we gotta... Well, I gotta get WarioWare Twisted for like about $70 and then... Of course, I gotta get Boktai, the games with the solar sensors that... Where the sunlight has an effect in the game, depending on if you're in the sunlight or not. I can't forget about the Game Boy Sonar, just in case I want to go fishing. That's about another $400 here. Oh, I should also get Drill Dozer for the Game Boy Advance, about another 100 bucks. That one has Rumble for the Game Boy Advance. Oh, of course, how could I forget? I've The Game Boy Color Sewing Machine by Singer. That's about $1,000 right there, bringing my total up to uh, somewhere around 1640 Let me grab my wallet and... Uh, damn, I guess it's too much money. My wallet's glitching out like the Tamagotchi.